We've spent the previous two videos looking at Maxwell relations in terms of where they come from and what they end up being for the four thermodynamic state functions of interest. So this video is going to be an example which shows how we can make use of this in practice to calculate something which we've already seen calculated a different way but just to show you that this works we're going to do it another way as well. So what we're going to do is calculate the entropy change during a reversible isothermal expansion, it could be expansion or compression, but we're going to consider expansion, expansion of an ideal gas. So we calculated this in a previous video, making use of the fact of we know how much heat had to be added in during an isothermal reversible expansion because it was the opposite of the amount of work that the system was doing. And we defined, we defined S as the reversible heat over temperature, so d delta S was Q over T. We're going to do it in a different way in this video and show that Maxwell relations actually do work and are going to give us the same answer. So uh, one way we could brute force this is kind of by calculating the whole path function. We could say delta S is an integral from the initial volume to the final volume, larger if it's an expansion, of the partial derivative of S with respect to V, and it's isothermal, so that's at constant T, integrated with respect to volume. So that would just be calculate the entropy at every point along the path and integrate how it changes as we change the volume, each infinitesimal amount all along the way. We, of course, don't have to do this because entropy is a state function, so it just matters what it is at the beginning and the end, but this could be one way and the uh, most brute force way to do it. Okay, so we might say, well, this ds dv, we don't know what that is. If we knew what that was, we probably wouldn't have to do this integral. So that's true, but there is a nice Maxwell relation, which comes from the Helmholtz energy, which can help us out, that says that ds dv at constant temperature is equal to dp dt at constant volume. Okay, so we replace a partial derivative of entropy, which can be fairly complicated, with a partial derivative of pressure with respect to temperature, which for an ideal gas is going to be pretty simple. So for our ideal gas, we know that PV equals nRT. So our pressure, P, is just going to be nRT over V. So the partial derivative of pressure with respect to temperature for an ideal gas temperature is just linear with pressure. Uh, pressure is linear with temperature, I should say. So its derivative is just nR over V. Okay, so the number of moles n and the gas constant r, those aren't functions of V. So we can just plug in this right here into our derivative right there and rewrite that integral. We're going to have that delta S equals pulling nr to the outside, integral v initial to v final of dv over v, and then this integral is just going to become nr log v final over v initial. Once you evaluate, it's just going to become log v. You now you evaluate that at final volume minus initial volume. That ends up going to that result. So we have our final result that delta S during a reversible isothermal expansion of an ideal gas is number of moles times gas constant times log of final volume minus initial volume. And this is the exact same result we got from calculating the heat which was input into the system during this expansion and dividing that by temperature for our Clausius definition of entropy where delta S equals uh, the heat divided by temperature for an isothermal process. So these Maxwell relationships, this Maxwell relation that we had from the Helmholtz energy proved very useful here because it gave us the same result that we got from uh, that other calculation. And if we use other Maxwell relations, we can derive similar results and we can use them to derive new things that we do have not seen before and can really help us avoid some very complicated derivatives with respect to entropy.